بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم مشهد دار توحيد وسنة A masjid to seek knowledge. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. A masjid for ibadah. Allahu Akbar. A masjid for brotherhood. But most importantly, a masjid upon the Quran and Sunnah. We face trials and challenges along the way, but we strove against them with the aid of Allah Azza wa Jal. However, our journey has only just begun. We are now moving on to our next project. You might be asking yourself. What does this have to do with me? With your generous cooperation, we will be able to open the first masjid in Clarence, New York, and you can reap the rewards. But before we get into that, we would like you to meet the community. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 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 Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Zina jangu ni salamani. Mi naita kumsigiti uno tarie tawhi wa sunna. Aman nam holo mahir, al ame holo moshid da'at tawhi wa sunna akta i student. Ismi Mahdi Nu'man, wa ana talib fi masjid dar tawhi wa sunna. Ano ismi Amjad Rizek, wa ana talib hain fi masjid dar tawhi wa sunna. Je m'appelle Ghayan, et je vais à la mosquée dar tawhi wa sunna. Nomi man Abdul Fazal, wa man donis johas tam dar in masjid dar tawhi wa sunna. Aman nam shahid. امی مسجد دارو تاکید اکت چاترو. اما نام سفوان. آن امی اکت چاترو مسجد دارو تاکید و سنت است. I am Abdul Rahman. I'm originally from Sri Lanka and I'm a student at Daru Tawhid wa Sunna. My name is Azri. I'm originally from Sri Lanka and I am a student at Masjid Daru Tawhid wa Sunna. میرا نام تهنان ہے اور میں یہاں مسجد دارو تاکید و سنت میں student ہوں. My name is Kevin. I am a student at Daru Tawhid wa Sunna. Hello, my name is Ustam. من این مسجدی در حد توحید و سنت با ختم میکنم. السلام عليكم و رحمة الله و بركاته. I welcome everyone to Masjid Dar al-Tawhid wa Sunnah. Inshallah, I'm gonna take everyone for a quick walk around the Masjid, show the facilities we have, everything we have to offer. Inshallah. So Alhamdulillah, we made it inside the Masjid, and this is a where all the activities and everything goes down, Allahumma barik. Uh, as you follow me here, alhamdulillah, this is the, the most important part of the masjid, alhamdulillah. This is the musalla, this is where the imam leads salah. And right behind it, um, as every man in Islam is commanded to do, is come to Jum'ah. And this is where the khatib gives the Jum'ah khutbah, where either start ustad or someone else to the ustad, but points to give the khutbah. And then over here at this very special table, alhamdulillah, this is where we have all our ilm given. Allahumma barik, wherever it's a, a conference, you know, we have a 40 hadith Nawawi class. Majority of the ilm, alhamdulillah, is given on this chair at this table. Wallahi, this is a huge ni'ma, a huge blessing in itself. Coming along, alhamdulillah, we have Tafsir, Tafsir al Saadi. One of the brothers actually has one of the books right now, benefiting from it. And over here we have the Quran. And we also have some books for the children here as well. Um, if I could show one, insha'Allah. Um, one of the books we have is the uh, the Juz Amma. You know, it has the Tajweed and then you know it has the meaning in English as well. Mashallah, Allah Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, our, our Habashi brother Rashid. How you doing, Habibi? Taib, Alhamdulillah. 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 Kif halak? بخير بخير والله دز ااا بخير دائما أبدا الحمد لله نبدأ إن شاء الله my first question I have for you الحمد لله you in specific you told me about this mission okay and you were here from the get go from the very start الحمد لله okay from the very start you've been here what changes have you seen from roughly a year and a half a year and a half ago till now. Ever since you first stepped into the doors till now. What, what change have you seen? All right, bismillah, salatu salamu ala rasulullah. Man, like, so I'll take us back. When I first came here, alhamdulillah, I was impressed. 
when I was informed about, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, our Imam, uh, Ustazuna, was able to, Alhamdulillah, establish this masjid um, in, in such a short space of time, min fadlillah. So I, Alhamdulillah, first time I came into the masjid, I was astonished by just the, the structure and Alhamdulillah, um, how much effort they put in to really make it a comfortable place. Alhamdulillah. So from that moment, just like with regards to the Jum'ah, which I first attended till now, mashallah, I've seen, mashallah, like people from all parts of Buffalo come for the main purpose, you know, of, of here to Urbudiyah and you know, singling out Allah in worship and just continuing to strive and get better upon that. And, um, you know, every week I would see more and more people trickle in. And, you know, from the, one of the first conversations I had with the those, with those Ustad and Imam was just simply, you know, what are the things that are next? You know, what's always what's next? It's like, it's alhamdulillah, I've seen that progress. And the foundation of all of, alhamdulillah, those projects and the goals and the ideas was knowledge, was, was trying to benefit, you know, the people benefit ourselves and the people alhamdulillah so yeah the imam would always you know, emphasize um to 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 keep things consistent you know, keep things consistent and make sure that we're attending all the classes um uh, you know as we're moving um alhamdulillah towards you know bigger things and uh alhamdulillah was a very uh, beautiful answer you know and uh i testified to these things too because uh you, you, you're the one who told me about this masjid because this, this is leading on to my next question, inshallah. You're the one who told me about this masjid. Prior to this masjid, subhanAllah, me and you, we had a unique situation. Me and you and a few other brothers, but since you're here right now, it's me and you. Well, of course, the other, other brothers were included in this. We were trying to, you know, seek knowledge in, in different avenues. Wallahi knows, as you witnessed, was a was a struggle. Akhi. Very big struggle. Like, you know, we tried to learn this book and learn that book under anyone we could get that was mm-hmm. that, we, that we saw as qualified to yeah. teach us. Uh, inshallah, we should take the viewers to the to kind of like the backstory and how we had struggles to seek knowledge. And alhamdulillah, we had, we're not necessarily struggling to seek knowledge anymore because we have the knowledge based in this method to learn, alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. So you can take the brothers and sisters through like the struggles that we had prior to this method in terms of seeking knowledge. Yeah, it's the struggles I think throughout, <coughs> especially the West, where... It's hard to find consistent communities, like I said, back going back to the consistency where there's um, beneficial knowledge being taught, alhamdulillah, um, by qualified, obviously, teachers teaching, um, you know, from alhamdulillah, the basics, teaching the basics to the people here, like myself and all of, all of us, um, going back to Tawheed. So just finding communities in the West that are teaching people the basics of Tawheed consistently is very rare. Mm. It's very rare. And Alhamdulillah, like, you know, we, a lot of us were just comfortable with, you know, our day-to-day, you know, uh, routine. So that struggle is always going to be there. But I would say most importantly is when the opportunity is there, you have to take it. And you have to support it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You have to support it because... Um, you know, subhanAllah, you want to be amongst those on the day of judgment that, you know, meet Allah with supporting his, aiding his religion and not just aiding his religion, but aiding the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, so that's definitely important. Um, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, you know, very uh, wise words and beautiful answers to both of the questions I asked. Alhamdulillah. And, um, you know, lastly, you kind of touched up on it a little bit in the last question that I, that I gave you about, you know, supporting a cause. And with that being said, you know, what are some, you know, words of encouragement that you have for the viewers out there to support our cause? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar. That's something that I thought about, you know, the moment I found this community was I want to play a role in trying to establish the religion in a time period in which there's a lot of confusion and misunderstanding. So I want to be amongst those who are participating and helping to clarify that and spread the, the da'wah 
uh, Salafiya, uh, you know, to to the to the world. Sure. Um, you know, understanding the religion based off, alhamdulillah, the understanding of the righteous predecessors, and you know, debunk misconceptions to the people, and uh, that's this is a perfect opportunity to do so. You know, if you can't obviously physically come and support, just you know, give what you can. Fi right. uh, and uh, you know, alhamdulillah, this is something that we we don't give up on. We keep continuing. You know, we never stop. You know, sometimes uh, some of us we we have the idea that once we give, khalas like. You know, what I mean, we did our part, but at the end of the day, you know, like the masa- like the Ustad, you know, Alhamdulillah has been teaching us, the Masajid, they're established and they're maintained by the believers. So, Alhamdulillah, we should all partake in this effort and, mm-hmm. um, you know, work together. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah, like Allah says, وَتَعَوْنَ عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى You know, mm-hmm. and um, Alhamdulillah, these are very uh, beautiful Beautiful responses. Uh, may Allah preserve you, Akhi. Ahsan alaik wa barak Allahu fiq. Ahsan alaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Salim, uh, alhamdulillah, you've been knowing me since high school till now, you know. Uh, we went to high school together. I was a freshman, you were a senior. And then college, I was a freshman. And, you know, you were there as well. And now we're here. Um, how has our relationship changed from high school till now? Because we were both in our adolescence, we we're still growing up, and alhamdulillah, now we're adults, you know? So how has our relationship changed from back then till now? Firstly, like, I think, dean-wise, you know, me and you, we came a long way from, uh, I'd say we were like little boys, dean-wise. We were really going to these public schools, free mixing and all this, so we were really lost, honestly. But now, you know, you became calmer, <laughs> slimmer. <laughs> <laughs> no more police car, but you know, <laughs> alhamdulillah, like there's been a lot of changes in us both. I know you've you probably seen changes in me regarding like music and just the way I move. Honestly, just becoming more manly and staying to ourselves. Honestly, has become right. better. Alhamdulillah, no, you've been less angry. You know? <laughs> no, it's a good thing though. Like really, like you used to, you know, it'd be easy to get under your skin, but now you know with the dean, you just throw. A verse or two at us, so you know, may shows Allah. that it's doing something over here, you know. May Allah, may Allah make me, me, may Allah make me and you better alike. And inshallah, mm-hmm. we'll keep progressing in, uh, with our end. Um, and alhamdulillah, uh, we are approaching or we are entering the mental month of Ramadan, and this will be your first Ramadan in our community, our community, as I as I mentioned, you know. How how does it feel, and what are you looking forward, inshallah, for this Ramadan in this community in specific? Honestly, to be honest with you, this is going to be my first Ramadan in a masjid, you know, like I've never really went to masjids for prayer during Ramadan, maybe once or twice, you know, but it's going to be my first Ramadan. I'm going to try to make as much prayers in the mosque as possible. Um, You know, the community wise, like it's, it's exciting. Like I've heard a lot of people talk about it. Like they said, it's really like a brotherhood feeling and all good vibes. So I want to really see what that's like. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be something different for me, you know, just as I keep progressing, it's going to keep, you know, trying to help me um, go towards the straight path. I mean, and uh, ask Allah to guide us to the straight path. Um, Alhamdulillah, those are very uh, beautiful words. And lastly, I want to say, as I ask every brother, is what are some words of encouragement you have for the viewers out there, inshallah? Stop by the masjid, honestly, because... um, I always give the example of myself, honestly, because I feel like a lot of people are in my shoes where they do religion as like a ritual, I would say, where you pray, you fast, you do these things, but you don't really know the meanings of any of these things, you know? Coming to the masjid, honestly, I've been digging deeper into my religion, into myself, and it's really changed how I view the world, how I view life, honestly, so... If anybody's like lost and doesn't know where to go or where to be in life, and just like at a point of their Islam where they know it's the truth, but they really can't justify it or have the facts for it, honestly, coming to this masjid is going to really change your perspective on a lot of things and, you know, guide you towards, like I said, that straight path that we all try to get on, you know? Mm -hmm. But, yeah, just really people looking to 
get better, looking to do better, it's always good to find a good community, a good masjid that's upon the deen, you know. And inshallah, hopefully if you guys do take my words seriously, it's a good place to be. And I will see you guys here. Inshallah. Uh, Allahumma barik, very wise words. And uh, we appreciate you coming on and taking the time. Jazakallah khair. So as I mentioned, alhamdulillah, our masjid has conferences. And one of the conferences we had here was with our Ustad Samir. He comes from uh, Stoma on Georgia, Allahumma barik. And uh, alhamdulillah, we, had, we went over the manzumah. Uh, Allah wa Darul Akhirah, Alhamdulillah, and we we, tremendous, we benefited tremendously. And over here, Alhamdulillah, we have uh, one of the translate, translated copies of the whole uh, Mandoma, and it's very beautiful. Um, then also right here, uh, we have uh, Fadl Islam, and this is when uh, us brothers traveled to Stoma in Georgia as well, the same community where I mentioned the Samir is from, and we benefited from Sheikh Ramzan, Hafizullah Taala. And this is a very beautiful book and a very beautiful conference as well. And on top of that, right here, um, we have Al Qasirat Al Ha'iya. Well, Ha'iya was done here in our masjid, alhamdulillah. This is like one small copy of the whole book, a uh, whole pamphlet of the book, you know. And wallahi, uh, these are just three conferences I can think of top of my head just from, just from the, the copies we have right there. Allahumma barik. So, Abdul Awal, as an elder brother in this community, how does it feel to see younger brothers in this, in this masjid? Oh, it's I feel very well and good. So when I see a lot of younger brothers is gathering in here, they're coming, they're learning some new uh, thing, Quran and Sunnah. I feel very, very happy. Very feel very, very happy. Alhamdulillah. So and pray to Allah, give us more younger brothers Inshallah. to join with us. Inshallah. And learn something in Quran and Sunnah. Inshallah. Uh, my next question is, Alhamdulillah, you've been to a lot of masajid. You lived in New York City, and you know, you've know you been in Buffalo, and Bangladesh, and like you've been all over the place. What is one difference you see at this masjid compared to a lot of other masajid you've been at? Yes, I do. I go a lot of masjid in New York City and in Buffalo too. But uh, I see it's a lot of difference from the other masjid. Mm -hmm. So here the masjid only practice in the Quran and Sunnah. No bidah, no shirk, nothing, nothing, no any other... Uh, I think practicing here is here only Quran and Sunnah. Really, I love it. Really, I love it without shirk, without Veda. This is the I'm, I'm feel very proud and very happy with this masjid and in this community. Alhamdulillah. And lastly, um, any words of encouragement you have for the viewers? Yes. So, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, I requesting you. So, we need some money for this uh, renovation of the masjid. Sure. So may Allah give you tafik to give us some uh, donation or any brothers have some uh, um, uh, money. So if you help us, Allah will help you too. So please donate us generously so we can renovate this masjid. Inshallah. Barakallahu feek, Abdul Awad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What's going on? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, doing good? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Ahnaf, uh, my first question is, uh, you go to an Islamic school, and alhamdulillah, you come to a, a masjid. Like, what is the difference between the two? Like, wh what do you feel is drastically different between the two? So, I think the thing that is different between the two is that uh, in Islamic school, your your parents pay for you to go there. And they're basically, like, they're, they're telling you, like, you're, you're basically being forced to go there, right. right? So, and here at the masjid, you're, you're voluntarily going over here, right? And uh, at the Islamic school... Because some people are getting forced, some of some of your peers they might not be able to like they don't want to learn about Islam like you do, right? So, but at the masjid, like brothers like you, Alhamdulillah, like they, when you see the brothers um, coming to the masjid and they're they want they want to learn and they encourage you to learn, then you, you want to learn of course. But in the Islamic school, if there's people that they don't want to learn and they're just doing it for the grade, like you know how some. Sometimes you just do it for the grade, right, yeah. all the uh, things that you learn. Mm -hmm. If you do it for the grade, then there's no point. And that, that's, the, that's one of the major differences between going to Islamic school and going to the, this masjid that I've seen uh, in the past year. So my second question, Ahnaf, is how much have you changed Islamic since the start of this masjid? Well, alhamdulillah, um, I'm going to go back to one of the hadith that I learned in this masjid. Uh, the hadith uh, that the Prophet ﷺ narrates the difference between the good friends and the bad friends. 
the good friend is like the one who sells perfume you're going to that you're going to benefit from him because you're going to get his perfume or he's going to give you uh f samples for free and the blacksmith who's going to be the example for the bad friend he's going to give you he's either going to burn you when you go to him mm -hmm. or you're going to get the bad smell from him smell. and that when when you see the brothers here in this masjid and especially the youth like me and you you're going to be encouraged to do more good things mm -hmm. like like i have واحتفل للفقه في الدين ولا تشتغل عنه بمال وخوال لا تقل قد ذهبت أربابه كل من سار على الدرب وصال في ازدياد العلم إرغام العيد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we have Baha here uh, me and him have been coming to this community since essentially the establishment of it and um, Baha my first question off the bat is uh, the Fort Hadith Nawib class, which is personally my favorite class. Um, what is one hadith that you see right now uh, that you love the most, like that that you like benefited from the most? So Alhamdulillah, we're about like halfway into it, so it's kind of a tough question. But one that comes to mind right now would be the hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه." None of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Mm -hmm. So I would say this hadith is very per pertinent to my not only to myself but to us as a community as a whole. And uh, I, I just took a lot of benefits from it. Alhamdulillah. So Alhamdulillah, we are youth growing up here in the West. The environment out there is not the best. What is one thing that this mission has done for you in terms of that? Like in terms of like shielding you from that? No, I'm not. Um, I would say, you know, two main things and one is the ilm and also the brotherhood you know mm -hmm. the ilm you know inshallah it protects you from the doubts and the desires and also the brotherhood because it gives you a place where you can you know still be on your deen and still ha you know enjoy the company of the brothers that we have in the masjid you know we, we organize trips organize events so and it gives you a place in, in the community, when you're surrounded with all the, you know, the fahisha and the mm -hmm. desires and all that, you had this place to come just, even if you just want to relax with the brothers, you had that here, inshallah, you know? And lastly, what I want to say, Akhi, is what are some words of encouragement and motivation for all the viewers out there? Like, like they, they've seen the the product of this community. And we know the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, in which he mentioned, that whoever builds a house for Allah in this world, Allah will build for him a house in Jannah. Mm -hmm. If you just spend a little bit from your wealth to that, you get a house in Jannah. What more could you want? So my message to the brothers and sisters is to, to give what they can, because anything that for, anything that anything for the sake of Allah will last. Nah, alhamdulillah. Barakallahu fiik, akhi. Wa fiik barakallah. And coming along there, uh, as I speak of Ilm, um, over here in this area, usually we have tables set up. And these tables are set up for our what? Our madrasa and our Arabic classes so far. This is what we have set up in our, in our in terms of like seated, seated, uh, uh, like, you know, seated, seated studies. Because we use a smart board right here, alhamdulillah, very big investment. And this smart board, the Ustad, he uh, teaches Arabic on it. He teaches, you know, the children, aqidah, whatever the case it is. And also if the sisters wanted to benefit, we have another smart board in the sister side where we have an HDMI that goes that goes from uh, both sides, alhamdulillah. And wallahi, it's, it's a big ni'mah, it's a big ni'mah, a big blessing. And with with the upgrading of our facilities, inshallah, we could have more space and more area to, you know, relax and be more comfortable. Because alhamdulillah, although we have, we're, we're doing everything right now, we are very compact with each other, subhanallah. But leading on to there, alhamdulillah, um, brothers and even from the salaf, we all needed to have a balance. We had to be adil. You know, we couldn't just uh, constantly be ilm, ilm, ilm 24-7. We had to take that, that breather sometimes. And this area, alhamdulillah, is a beautiful area where the brothers come and sit and relax. You know, as, as a brother had a long day, comes here, sits down, grab a mushaf, he wanted to read the Quran. You know, and some brothers could com conversate here, you know. Alhamdulillah, the masjid has the facilities offered. And it's a big ni'mah and a big blessing. اطلب العلم ولا تكسل فما أبعد الخير على أهل الكسال وهجر النوم وحصله فما يعرف المطلوب يحصل. السلام عليكم كيفن. I want to ask you a few questions, inshallah. Firstly, what does this message mean to you? 
Wa alaikum salam. This message means to me, it's like a a, a guide. Also, I would say a guiding like light, because when I'm not here, I feel like everything in life just kind of pushes down. When I'm here, I just feel light, and like I'm just I don't have to worry about anything that's outside the masjid. It feels like a true house of Allah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, my next question was Alhamdulillah. It's known that you're a revert, uh, and you're embarking upon this beautiful journey of Islam. And what would you say how much your Islam has changed from the beginning of you practicing Islam until now? Um, I would say my Islam changed in almost every way. Now I pray five times a day. I pray. I try and pray the night prayer every day. I'm also trying to be here for Fajr prayer. And I'm also reading the Quran a lot, a lot more. And I feel a deeper connection too. And I feel more... Like from the last conference, I feel more conscious in my prayers, mm-hmm. if that's the right word to use. Concentration, yeah, like for yeah. sure. You, like you feel, you feel like you're you're more involved with your prayer. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, and and lastly, you know, uh, what are some uh, words of encouragement for the viewers out there to help us uh, support our cause, inshallah? As we know, we're moving to the building. Uh, yes, I I did see it. It's a beautiful masjid, and something I would say to inspire the viewers to support support this fundraising Mm -hmm. is when you support you're helping everybody come to a place where they'll be loved surrounded by love even by people that don't really know them Mm -hmm. everybody welcomes you it's an open community you're always going to be learning every chance every second you here you're going to be learning after isha after fajr at (laughs) conferences all that i don't know if my pronunciation is that good yeah you know i love (laughs) that's good medical (laughs) Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we have our brother Abdul Hakim. Abdul Hakim, you're a brother. You're not necessarily a young guy, but not necessarily an old guy. You're, you're like that perfect middle. Um, when you come to this masjid, like, do you feel like an outsider? Alhamdulillah, absolutely not. Uh, and I could honestly say that from uh, the day I walked into this masjid, little, probably a little over a year ago, uh, I was received with open arms. Uh, there were all ages, age groups present. Uh, uh, you did make note of my age. I'm 35 years old, so I do kind of fall right in that middle, that middle group, mm-hmm. the latter half of of what would be considered our youth in 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 the religion of Islam. And um, I've not felt awkward, uh, distant, uh, singled out in any way. Uh, there's so many young brothers such as yourself that are, you know. Uh, in, in their 20s and, and, and carry themselves with uh, just just this confidence and this eagerness to to seek knowledge, to, to be a part of establishing this community and, and just staying hungry and staying active and, and, and doing things with, with pure intentions. Uh, may Allah preserve you all. I mean, I mean uh, so absolutely not. I've, I've never once felt distant, outcast, or... or or shut out from any, even with the elders. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah, may Allah preserve them. Never, um, I mean, never have, never have I ever felt uh, left out due to age. Everybody comes together here. Uh, we're we're small. Um, we're growing, mashallah, and um, we're we're very tight knit. My second question is, what is one area in your Islam that you've seen improve the most when you started coming here? One area in my Islam that I've seen improve the most since I've started coming here would definitely have to be uh, my pursuit towards uh, beneficial knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, And that is due to the resources that have been provided um, by this community. MashaAllah, in such a short amount of time, um, we've had so many lectures, conferences um, within this past year that have just been... um, uh, in uh, Iman Booster, um, just a, a just a weight off of my shoulders personally, and I'm pretty sure brothers and sisters can say the same thing, because this is something that a lot of us in Buffalo, Western New York, this region, right, uh, have definitely been looking for, mm. um, especially as far as the, just consistency, mm-hmm. right. Um, just the consistency of uh, 
different things that we've had going on that have been uh, resourceful. Once again, we're going back to the age topic, the youth, the small, the middle, the elders, everybody's been able to benefit. The brothers and the sisters both, alhamdulillah. Um, even just the, the participation from the, the sisters, may Allah preserve them, Amen. I mean, it, it's, it's phenomenal. And it's just, this is a true a true community based uh, upon uh, Tawheed and Sunnah. And, 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 and you know, we're we trying to grow. Um, so I definitely would have to say that's number one. Um, number one is definitely personally my pursuit towards beneficial knowledge. This community has improved that greatly. Uh, it's nothing like when you nothing like finding an actual message that's providing that. Mashallah, mm -hmm. we have the internet. We have so many other resources in in, in this uh, new age, which they're been it's beneficial, right? You can log on. You can search, you can download, we have PDFs, we have these different resources where we can study and do things on our own, but it's nothing like sitting in um, and, and learning um, all of these uh, different matters and, and these different, uh, yeah. just everything. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, okay. what are some words of encouragement that you have for the viewers out there? For the viewers out there, uh, listen, I really strongly... Uh, we strongly uh, encourage each and every one of you out here to, if you cannot contribute to the expansion of Dara Tawheed Wa Sunnah financially, just spread the word. Spread the word. This is an extremely beneficial place for all the believers, those who are local, those who are traveling. These are these are facts. These are things that we've seen, we've witnessed. And these are things that continue to, to happen. This is a beneficial place for the traveler. This is a beneficial place for the, the local, the child, all the way to the elder. Um, and whatever you can contribute, whether it be word of mouth, whether it be a share, uh, a post, anything to expand this, this, this beautiful community that is upon Tawheed and Sunnah and that is completely for the benefit of the believer, whatever you can do. We, we, we have seen so much, so much benefit over the past year. We've seen so much growth over the past year, mashallah, and, and we're continuing to see uh, so much mercy, receive so much mercy from Allah and, 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 and just everything that we've been through and we've been able to uh, continue to... Uh, do so much, do so much at words. I don't even have all the words to, to put together, alhamdulillah. But like I said, to those of you out here, whatever you can contribute uh, to the to the cause of, of, of this masajid, Dara uh, Tawheed Wa Sunnah, please reach out and, and put yourself in a position to receive the, the blessings and rewards that will go directly to you when someone opens a Quran in here, when somebody offers the salat in here and, and walks through these doors and and sits in here and and just gets closer to Allah. That's all I that's all I could say. Alhamdulillah. 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 Every masjid needs a wudu area. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, salah is the most important component of a masjid, of a masjid. And in order to do salah you have to have what? You have to have wudu. And Alhamdulillah we have a sink right here, you know, for brothers to wash up, you know, and do what they have to do. But we have Two sinks for wudu right here, alhamdulillah, as well. Uh, we, you know, this is a pretty, like I said, pretty compact space. We only have two wudu stations. We have a lot of brothers who come for Jum'ah. For regular salat in the day, even we have a lot of brothers who come, alhamdulillah. So, with the upgrade of the facilities, inshallah, we could have more wudu area and more space for the brothers to not feel so compact and even miss the waqt of salah because of how many people have to make wudu at one time. Assalamualaikum Abdul Aziz. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kayf al hal? Alhamdulillah. Kayf al halak? Wallah, alhamdulillah. Nashkar Allah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Abdul Aziz, alhamdulillah, you've been knowing me for some quite time. Alhamdulillah. You've uh, known me since I was a child. We, you know, we, we have uh, some kind of an age gap, you know, like a few years, but we know since I was a child. And we were in one community, and alhamdulillah, we transitioned to this community. Um, how has that transition helped you as a person? Alhamdulillah, you know, um, from. 
transitioning from different communities, uh, especially coming to Masjid Dera Tawheed or Sunnah, I've found that uh, there were many durus and ilm based uh, classes that were going on that benefited me and my family tremendously, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. In that regard, you mentioned your family, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, can you like elaborate a little bit more on how this has benefited your family? Alhamdulillah, um, coming to Masjid Dar al-Tawheed or Sunnah, there's ongoing classes for both the brothers and sisters. And um, they get one-on-one attention with uh, the teachers here. And alhamdulillah, you know, not just the brothers are benefiting. Also, the sisters do benefit from various courses and classes that are going on at the masjid. Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, so Loma Barak is really beautiful to hear. Um, <clears throat> my last uh, question for you, inshallah, as I asked all the other brothers is, what are some words of encouragement, encouragement and motivation for the viewers out there, inshallah? You know, one thing I would uh, tell the brothers and sisters is uh, to donate generously towards the building of a masjid. As the Prophet Sallallahu has told us, مَنْ بَنَا مَسْجِدًا لِلَّهِ بَنَا لَهُ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ you know, whoever builds a masjid for the sake of Allah, Allah builds a house in Jannah for them. Sure. So this is a tremendous reward that they can partake in and, uh, you know, reap the fruits in Jannah. Bi'idhnillah. Bi'idhnillah ta'ala. Barakallahu feek, Abdul Aziz. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with right now? Ali Salim. Ali Salim. Mm, Ali Salim. Okay. I think I know two of your brothers, man. Is that true? Yeah. I do. Oh, okay. Alhamdulillah, Ali. Uh, so, Ali, you first question I have for you, inshallah, is um, about how long ago did you start coming to this masjid? I started coming to the masjid probably like a year ago. It was like it was like my brother's idea and my so so me and my Ab, so Abdi just came into town, and I, and I used to never go to masjids. I I used to never pray like that seriously. You should never take prayer so seriously. After after my, my brother my, um Salim went like uh come 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 to this masjid and then after that I went like okay and then after that first time I, I went to the masjid I felt like I felt like something just let off my chest. Oh wow subhanAllah. Something just let off my chest and then after that I le- I learned I learned like I, I was seeing like how they prayed, like they were serious. Alhamdulillah. And all that stuff and after that. So you're saying like it influenced you, right? Alhamdulillah. In a positive way, like a positive influence. Alhamdulillah. And uh my second question is, I remember when you uh when you came, you would you attended a conference, right? And that was probably your first Islamic conference, you know, because you know, we started they started classes from uh, you know, after Maghrib and went all the way until after Isha. Like it was long, you know? Mm-hmm. Like it was still you know, we're still new to it. It was like mm-hmm. a little bit long. And uh, you're very young, and you you know, you're trying to take notes and trying to you know benefit from from the classes, right? Mm. And since that was your first Islamic conference, like h- how did it feel? Like did you feel like like how, yeah? Take me through like how did it all feel for you? How did it all feel? Like how so did you, how did you take day, it all in? Yeah, like, so how did you take it all day, in? So the first day, so the first day, I was like, wow, this this is actually long. <laughs> and after that, the second day, the second day, I was like, I was like, okay, okay, I can I can handle this. Let me let me start writing some decent notes. After that, the, the third day, the third day, I wrote I wrote like a lot of good notes. I showed my brother, and my brother was like, "Okay, that's very good." Alhamdulillah, that's very beautiful to hear. And inshallah, you become a scholar one day, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, my inshallah. my last question I have for you, inshallah. <laughs> well, this is not necessarily a question, but rather, um, I ask everyone this, everyone. So this is not this is not a trick question, inshallah. Okay, the question here is. Um, what are some words of encouragement for all the guys or all the people who are watching the video inshallah so what are words of encouragement you have for them words of encouragement for them mm-hmm. don't don't believe everything that you hear you, you should believe everything that you hear in the masjid that you actually believe that's doing good for you mm-hmm. mashallah mashallah very wise words from a, a wise young man Ali appreciate it man barakallahu feek alhamdulillah this is another very important area for the masjid this is where the Ustaz offices and all the behind the scenes work happens as well, inshallah. 
When you first come in, you notice that we have these lights set up, these chairs set up, and these mics set up, and this camera and this camera stand. Uh, you may ask, what is this for? If you uh, follow our YouTube page, you know that we have a podcast, and this is where this happens. If you come in more, inshallah, you could see that this whole wall right here is full of books. Allah uh, Mubarak. This is a lot of the books Ustad uh, had, and he teaches us from these books. Alhamdulillah. Like the other night, he grabbed a book randomly, and you know he was teaching us from it. And uh, Alhamdulillah, it's very uh, beautiful and important to see. And, um, you know, this is where we do all the editing. And this is where, you know, every, everything happens, Alhamdulillah. This is, this, is where, this is where all goes down. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Akhuna Tahnan, how you doing, man? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Um, Tahnan, you come from India. You are an uh, international student. Allahumma barik. We actually met at university. Exactly. Alhamdulillah. Uh, yes, you're an international student from India. Although India, it's not a predominant, it's not a predominant Muslim country. Mm -hmm. From how big it is, yeah, like what, two hundred and fifty-six million Muslims, something like that. Like yeah, it's a huge lot of Muslims, subhanAllah. Um, can you take me through? Or no, not not can you take me through, but rather, have you gained more knowledge in India, where there's a lot of Muslims, there's a lot of masajid? Mm -hmm. Have you gained more knowledge in India, or have you gained more knowledge here at this masjid? So, so in India, as you mentioned, there's a lot of Muslims and there's a lot of masajids. Every masajid has a different structure that they follow. They have their own imams and how they are how the Mus how they are practicing. It's different. There are many deviations in uh, in the even in the masajids and people no, want to say this is this is not this 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 is this masajid and this is that masajid and I don't go to that one and I go to this one. And that that predominantly follows there, and due to also being uh, Islam as a tradition and religion, Islam is just given out to you to mm -hmm. follow rather than to understand and you know to feel how it is. It has been just told to you that you have to pray five times. It has been just told to you that you have to fast in the Ramadan. That's the way that how the teaching is being followed. And till date, due to this, that's how people follow. They have been told you have to go to Juma. They have been told you have to do this. But they don't understand how this is helping themselves mm. and how this is helping them reach closer to Allah. Mm. And subhanAllah, when I came here, I realized that what are the reasons, what are the understandings, and what are the right ways to implement this. And this helped me, you know, be closer to Allah and also helped me to realize the understanding behind what are the deens, deen and what are the uh, knowledge that has been transferred. Alhamdulillah. And that helped me a lot. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That's a... Uh, Allah was not expecting me. Allah subhanahu wa That's uh, really beautiful to hear. Because, you know, people come from Muslim lands and you're right, you know, mm -hmm. they're... Not necessarily Muslim lands because I can't call India Muslim land, but for me, like it's just so big. So many Muslims there that yeah. you have that tradition implemented in mm -hmm. them, you know. And, uh, you know, my second question is Alhamdulillah, um, you know, mm -hmm. we got to benefit from one of the major scholars of our time, Hafizullah wow. Ta'ala, uh, Sheikh Ramzan. And he, he came to the USA, you know, he came to Georgia. <laughs> but, you know, me, you, and, you know, what, like 10, 12. I, well, I forget the number. It was a lot of us. Mm -hmm. We all went down as a masjid and we all went to seek knowledge from him. Yeah. For you, mm -hmm. how was that experience? Alhamdulillah. I think it was one of my first experiences where I traveled and I learned under a real scholar, you know. Mm -hmm. You can definitely see the difference when it comes. Even in his short words, he's explaining a lot and he's trying to target the things that are there that are very important. As I can give from my background back in India also, you know, people, they try to they make their own assumptions. They try mm. to have their own traditions, you know. <laughs> they try to follow Islam as a tradition. And I try to include their tradition, what their fathers have done. Yeah. In India, Islam is prominently that what their fathers and forefathers used to follow. They want to keep on following that. And they don't want to understand the deen that has been followed by the Prophet and his companions. Wow. And when I went there and I attended, I learned about this. It was really uh, changing, you know. I really felt my uh, the things that I have learned were, you know, not that true. And then what I learned here is more different, and that is the reality. I mean, uh, people, people, they just want to follow what has been given to them. And when you hear what is there with the prophet mm -hmm. and the, the companions that they follow, you know, you want to be one of them. You want oh, to follow okay. them. You want to learn about them. Right. I mean, that's the way you love them. You want to learn about them. You want to follow them. 
And Alhamdulillah, in the conference, the Sheikh Mohammed bin Ramzan, he clearly explained the innovations, the misguidances that have come to the people and how we can, one can resolve this. And Alhamdulillah, that really helped me. Allahu Akbar. Uh, you know, SubhanAllah, like, who would have thought, you know, like you, like you who would have thought, you know, you're coming from India, mm-hmm. you know, although, like, I, I keep mentioning, reiterating that it's not a Muslim land, but it's just 256 million yeah, Muslims. It's yeah. like, the Muslims are scattered all over the place yeah, there, you know? Yeah. And you probably come from a Muslim community, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm suggesting as well. Who would have thought, like, you would never thought that you'd come to Buffalo, New York, and subhanAllah, like, it's like, like I'm going to the Catholic yeah. land, like, what am I going to learn here? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, who would have thought, you know? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you know, this, this is the beauty of uh, having a community built upon Quran and Sunnah, and, you know, brothers willing to actually go out and seek the knowledge as well with each other, you know? Uh, Alhamdulillah, this is what builds brotherhood and, and strong relationships with each other, inshallah. Uh, lastly, without further ado, can you... Uh, give some words of encouragement for all the viewers out there, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. I'd love to give my brothers back uh, who are listening to this. So, inshallah, we always see Islam as a tradition and practice that has been given by our fathers. And, you know, you just want to implement that and get over it and finish it. So one should also try to understand the deen behind it. You know, one try to understand why are we doing this and how we can benefit this, alhamdulillah. And also see uh, the real sunnah that is there following along this learn the hadith learn the quran the translations and inshallah uh, this will really help you you know get more towards alignment towards the deen of allah inshallah. and inshallah we'll be inshallah we'll be together in jannah inshallah <laughs> inshallah and the way to jannah is following you know the the path of the prophet sallallahu and the way that Allah has given us, you know. So, uh, Allah, I, I appreciate your valuable time, Akhi Tahnan. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kayf halak, Mahmoud? Alhamdulillah, Habib Amjad, kayf halak? Wallah, alhamdulillah, bi khair. Mashkurullah, alhamdulillah, daiman wa abadan. As we see, Allah Mubarak, you're in your whole Sudani gear. Uh, alhamdulillah, you got to represent, right? Jazakallah khair, mashallah, I see the Palestini. May Allah bless Palestine and all of the Muslim lands. I mean, may Allah bless Sudan as well and all the Muslim lands. So, without further ado, Alhamdulillah, we mentioned that you are from Sudan. And Sudan is a Muslim country where people practice Islam openly and they have no shame. It's it's a Muslim land, it's ma'roof. You know, you see people walking around, masajid everywhere, stuff like this. And coming to Buffalo, a random place here in the USA, did you expect to, to find a masjid with a lot of people not fearful that they're Muslim, like they're, they're proud that we're Muslim, stuff like this, like Shabab and, and older men and stuff like this. Like, did you did you expect to find this uh, in America in general? Alhamdulillah, uh, ala To be honest, Habibi Amjad, I was not expecting, subhanAllah, to find uh, a masjid uh, in which I will find people who are uh, proudly and correctly showing that they are a real Muslim. So, Alhamdulillah, people on uh, Kitab and Sunnah. And subhanAllah, it has been like a a big worry for anyone who's kind of like leaving the Muslim lands mm-hmm. uh, will be uh, uh, if he will be able to find uh, like a place in which he can memorize Quran, uh, learn uh, the Kitab and Sunnah in the in the correct uh, way. Uh, so Subhanallah, Allah blessed me with this uh, masjid and being in the neighborhood of this masjid, mm-hmm. it has been a big blessing. But to be honest, I was not expe- expecting the the extent, Subhanallah, of the of the durus of the activities that has been in the masjid, with regard to memorization of Quran, uh, with regard to uh, kind of like weekly uh, reminders, uh, the books that has been taught here in the masjid, al arba'un al nawiyya and having a sheikh from difference. Uh, from different uh, states uh, mm-hmm. coming to the masjid and doing muhadarat and, and durus. Uh, so alhamdulillah, it has been like a, a, a nice surprise for alhamdulillah, me. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. And um, I think I think a question leading on to that one, uh, you know, what makes this masjid unique? Because I remember, I think we had a discussion before, you said, you know, you you went to like, Craig uh, wrong. was it Ireland yeah. you said you went to? Yes. So... <laughs> That's just one place. I don't know your whole story, you know. But like, what makes this masjid unique from anywhere else you've been? Yeah, uh, Subhanallah. In this masjid, I found myself like in a big Muslim family. So Subhanallah, it has not been just a masjid in which you you will be able to practice your prayers and you will just uh, go out. You will find like a, a real family which will support you in a difficult time, in in a good time. 
Uh, subhanallah, during my short stay here in Buffalo, I, I will say for the last one year and a half, uh, I've been coming through uh, different circumstances, uh, starting from a good circumstances of me getting married. Uh, and after that, uh, the situation which is going on in, uh, in Sudan right now, may Allah, may Allah bring peace to Sudan, Palestine Amen. and all of the Muslim country and uh, bring victory Amen. to the Muslim Ummah. So subhanallah, the kind of support that you find. Uh, the people around you in the masjid asking about your personal affairs, uh, offering a helping hand, uh, extending a dua, and even the imam during his druz and uh, and and and, uh, and the shiukh who leads a salah here uh, by making uh, dua and qunut for the Muslim countries, mm -hmm. uh, reminding people that al Muslim lil Muslim kal bunyan al marsus yishdu baadhu baadhan, wa mathal al Muslimin fi tawadhim wa tarahumhim ka mathal al jasad al wahid. So subhanallah, I, I found those uh, hadith that kind of like uh, truly implemented uh, in this masjid. Walillahi alhamd. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Allah, very beautiful jawab. Uh, Allah mubarak. Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, me from Philistine too, we have ongoing conflict. And, you know, we have brothers asking, hey, you know, although my family is alhamdulillah in Gaza, you know, they're in the Duff al Ghurbiya and like the people still ask, you know, hey, how's your family doing? Because, you know, it's Allah, Allah must have. Think, things happen both sides. And uh, that's very, uh, very true. I can relate to that as well, alhamdulillah. And uh, lastly, what I have for you, Akhi, is if you have some words of encouragement for uh, all the viewers out there, inshallah. Yeah, uh, I would like to encourage all of the brothers uh, to make the maximum perceived benefit of Ramadan. Uh, we are expecting Muslim and Muslim al khair wa ta'a. And uh, we kind of remember like uh, Hadith Umm Al-Mu'mineen Aisha كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وكان أجود ما يكون في رمضان حينما يأتيه جبريل ويدارسه في القرآن فرسول الله أجود بالخير من الريح المرسلة فسبحان الله وينكرج all of the brothers uh, in the months of Ramadan uh, to be able to, to participate in the different activities that will be held in Shalla in the Masjid uh, with regard to Taraweeh and uh, Salatul Qiyam, inshallah, and the different rules, and to be generous uh, to the masjid and uh, to the community, uh, men mentioning the, the benefits of having like a, a such a place in which a mus uh, the Muslim people are going to be gathered, uh, support each other. Nasa Allah and Yubalakan Ramadan, while Ummah Kulaha Bekhair, Wanasr, Waiza, Watumanina, Wasudad, inshallah. Amin, Amin. أكرمك الله ونشكرك الله أخانا الغالي بارك الله فيك وفيك بارك حبيبي جزاك الله خير على الاستضافة so alhamdulillah we're here at the sister side اللهم بارك they have um a lot of facilities for themselves in like a small area alhamdulillah and they have Quran over here as well اللهم بارك they have a tafsir as well they have tajweed and they have translations of Sahih Bukhari so alhamdulillah they have their own facilities and they have their own class that goes on here along with the brothers classes as well and they have a nice small table for them to benefit and learn and converse with each other along with the TV right here. As I mentioned earlier, for the Arabic classes in the madrasa, this TV is streamed. So well, we, have a, we have a TV over there, they have our own TV. This is what I was talking about. This is the one right here, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we have a blessing with sitting with yet another beautiful and young brother. Safwan, Allah mubarak. Safwan, alhamdulillah, I've been knowing you for some time now. You're one of the originals of the masjid, alhamdulillah, with your father and you know your younger brothers, um, and your family in general. Um, alhamdulillah. My first question is, um, how do you feel? Because you go to public school at the moment, correct? No. So how do you feel when you go to public school? Like when you walk into public school, like when you walk into school. How do you feel compared to when you walk into the masjid? How do you feel? Um, so when I walk into my public school, it's like very intense. It's Lots of sins going on. There's screaming and all that stuff. It doesn't make me feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And um, when I walk into the masjid, I feel very calm. Like no worries, no nothing. Mm -hmm. It's like my place to be. So public school is not very suitable for me. Alhamdulillah, may Allah keep your heart attached to the masjid. Um, further going off of that question, mm. Alhamdulillah, you're, like I said, you've been here for a long time now, mashallah. Um, you know, what are, uh, how, how have you 
benefited from the masjid, you know, like when you come here, you know, you're not you're not just going here to pray salah and leave, right? Uh-huh. You're doing more things than that. Alhamdulillah, you're attentive to the classes and you're, you're active taking notes. You know, how does it make you feel? Like you know, do like what what have you uh, grasped and what have you learned from from coming here? You know, like what 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 area have you improved in the most? You know, um, the the place uh, I improved most was like my Quran have and um. My knowledge on hadith and all that stuff because of the Sunday classes of Imam Nawawi. Mm-hmm. So, I've benefited a lot from this masjid. Alhamdulillah. Before I came here, I wasn't really that, um, like, attentive to knowledge. I was just, like, the regular kid. Mm-hmm. But now, this masjid has, like, changed my life. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And it's kind of like uh, we learn about Abdullah ibn Abbas, how the mm-hmm. Prophet made dua for him to make him, you know, wise and knowledgeable in the religion. And he had many names like Hibr al-Ummah, you know. He was a young man, like very, very young man. He didn't reach the puberty when he met the Prophet ﷺ. Lastly, what I want to say, inshallah, Safwan, is what are some words of encouragement you have for all the viewers out there, inshallah, that are going to watch this video. And when they see you, they're going to say, oh man, this guy Safwan hit my heart. So what are some words you're going to say, inshallah? Um, so if you donate, it's probably going to change my life and change other people's lives life too, the youth and all the other people. So that's my advice for you guys. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Safan, very wise words from a young man. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we have our first Lankan here, uh, Azri. How you doing, akhi? Alhamdulillah, no complaints. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Azri, uh... Azri, uh my first question, inshallah, I want to get into is, um, Alhamdulillah, from the Sri Lankan brothers that come to this masjid, you are the first one I met. Uh, can you elaborate why you were the first one I met, not like any of the other brothers I met? Like, why were you the first one? Yes, absolutely. Um, it was kind of like an accident. One day my mom says, oh, can you drop me and your sister off at the masjid for classes? So I thought this was like another class she has to go. So I came to the masjid, I dropped my sister off, and I was in the parking lot. Mm. I did not know this was a masjid. I thought it was, this was just like a tutoring class or something like that. Anyway, I saw like um, brothers walking inside the masjid. And then so I walked in, and then I met you, I met Baha, and then we prayed. And the Ustad gave a talk after, the cla- after Salah. So that was like my first impression of the masjid. And ever since then, I've kind of like been attached to the masjid. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. It's, it's, wallah, it's amazing to hear. Uh, kind of like, you know, you say you found out an accident, but everything is by Qadr of Allah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, alhamdulillah, we learned the other day how like everything's from Qadr, you know? So secondly, uh, what I wanted to ask was, alhamdulillah, I noticed that you are very close uh, to the imam and his sons. Like, I I, very, I noticed this, alhamdulillah. This is a beautiful thing. Um, how has this affected you? I can't put it into words how much this has affected me. First of all, the Imam and his sons, um, all three of them, they're like, not even my companions, they're like my brothers. Like, I'll be honest, completely transparent, they're like my brothers. Like, the way they have not just helped me, like, life-wise, but like, Islam-wise, no one really gets this, like, you know, this is, no one gets this in their life. This is like such a blessing by Allah itself, you know. I can't explain into words. It's 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 really great. Like you know, they encourage me. If I have questions, I go to them. Each one of them. If one's unavailable, I go to the next one. Like you know, they they're like very humble as well. Like if I am unaware of something, and I have a doubt about Islam, and I ask them, they don't like put me down. Like you know, this is what you would see if you go to someone with knowledge. You ask them a question. Like you know, some some people have like an arrogance in their heart, right? Oh, I'm better than you. You start sons. I can I can put it into words. Like I go to any one of them, and if they see me doing something wrong, like my actions or anything, they correct me without humiliating me. You know, like it's great. Well, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, and you know th- this is something as all of us Muslims should strive to do is not to always put our brother under the ground. You under know, we ground, should yeah, uplift our brother, yeah. and we should ho- uh, hope and think the best of our brother as well. What are some words of encouragement you have for all the viewers out there, inshallah? I think the first thing would be um, always be humble. When people who don't practice Islam, they read your character. And, like They see how you act. Even if you might be a person who practices Islam, who does the basics, read Quran and everything, 
when they like see you like your character like the way you speak the way you act towards them that's the first thing they take it doesn't matter like how much of a person you have been practicing in islam like you might come to the masjid for five salahs on time if you have arrogance in your heart they look at that like they take things personally you know what i'm saying so always be humble and when someone's even if you have even if you have knowledge and someone's and even if you have knowledge and someone's advising you about something always be open minded like when it comes to like seeking knowledge and you know um uh, but these are very beautiful uh, answers and you know one thing we learned together is you know arrogance is what led iblis to being who iblis is today right, you know what i mean yeah. so long of bad these are very beautiful answers in bad glow figures assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh adir sri lanka how are you doing akhi wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah wa anta ya akhi alhamdulillah bi alf khair wa alf ni'ma nashkur allah uh my first question to you adil i mentioned that you're from sri lanka mm-hmm. um can you talk about your different stages of life like did you live in sri lanka or would you move after sri lanka yeah. or like you know can you, can you mention the different stages of your life and how your islam has changed from those stages of life okay so uh me and my entire family we uh we i was we pretty much born in sri lanka and we grew up there around like to like 10 or 11 years old we pretty much grew up in sri lanka and alhamdulillah during that stage of my life uh my islam it was i wouldn't say it was it's perfect because no nobody is perfect right right but uh yeah we were very practicing or like yeah like our whole family is practicing and and uh, our islam was pretty good right mm-hmm. you know we're learning more we're gaining more knowledge and then around 2014 i believe our shift to you know america which is a kufar country you know what i mean yeah. and um and uh, that switch it kind of you know it, it deteriorates our being a little bit so like so it's it's a big shift it's not a minor shift you know coming from sri lanka a uh, a semi muslim country and then coming into a kufar country so it's it just it kind of deteriorates so uh, let me ask did you from sri lanka did you go straight to buffalo or where did you go La, uh so we first when i when we first moved here it was in bronx New York City in the Bronx okay. you know and coming there was you know going to public schools and usually my whole my whole for the first few years it would just be me my fardal salah and school and that's it and there's not not much benefit to that you know what i mean mm-hmm. and then i i believe around 2021 that's when we came here to buffalo alhamdulillah alhamdulillah and has your islam you know been changed when you came to buffalo oh definitely alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. yeah coming here you know at the very beginning because you know it's a new place you would you don't know much people and the connecting and finally when i ended up here alhamdulillah the amount of knowledge i gained in the first few months it was it definitely was just the first few months alhamdulillah i'm very grateful for that alhamdulillah and uh you know i i'm aware i know of your brothers and your father lama barak you guys all come here um and how has the masjid not only changed you but changed them as well alhamdulillah this this masjid for my family it's it's like our family too the brothers and for for the 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 sisters in our family like it's 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 a family it's a whole family for us you know we're all benefiting we all come in here and yeah it's it's improved our relationships within ourselves too alhamdulillah allahu akbar um and my last question is uh what are some words of encouragement you have for the viewers inshallah oh so this masjid it's uh primarily i wouldn't say it's 100% it's primarily based on the shabab you know the the masjid it's semi run by the shabab and the brothers everybody in this masjid knows each other everybody is helpful and it's a great community in inshallah alhamdulillah barakallahu fiik adil wa barak uh as you see the sisters they have only one wudu station and they only have one toilet um and they need to upgrade their facilities as well they don't have nearly as much as the brothers facility as it's known you know more brothers do come to the masjid but there are sisters who come to the masjid as well and they don't have as much facilities as the brothers have either and they don't have any facilities really to begin with besides one wudu area and just one bathroom subhanallah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah i have uh, another blessing to sit in front of one of the elders of the masjid alhamdulillah may allah preserve you uh, abu hanaf um firstly I just mentioned your son's name Hanaf alhamdulillah sometimes when uh, we need someone to lead salah because you know you know emergencies happen where you know the imam can uh, necessarily be here sometimes or one of the qura can't be here and Hanaf leads salah um at this masjid like how does it make you feel that you know your son Allah mubarak he's only 13 14 years old and he's leading salah for for everyone how, how does that make you feel inside 
Alhamdulillah, Samuel, Alhamdulillah. I feel really good in my heart because to my son, this is my dream to the my son become the one day Allah and teach the he learn the Islam properly and he teach the people the Islam mm -hmm. and this is the right place to learn the for Islam. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Uh, whoever helping this fun, may build up this masjid, Allah bless them, all of the brothers who are working with this uh, masjid. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, alhamdulillah that, that's a you know, very, very good thing to see that someone young as him leading Salah, you know, and uh, he's a very, very bright person. He raised mm -hmm. a, a beautiful uh, young son, Allah Mubarak. Second question I want to ask you, inshallah, is. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you are one of the elders of the masjid, and you know the masjid predominantly like has a lot of uh, young guys. You know, when you come into the masjid, like do you ever feel you you feel like you're respected? Like you feel come you have you have respect? Alhamdulillah, and there's a lot of young people. This they come in over here. This very respectful people, and they um, most of the uh, student. They respect each other and they know they're learning the good, right deen over here. Mm -hmm. So they, same at the same time, they're learning this how to, to respect the people. They're learning over here. Uh, whoever I meet so far, I see they're very good people in here. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. All younger kids, Alhamdulillah. younger brothers. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. You're, you're someone, you know, you're much older than us and you have a lot of experience in life. Alhamdulillah. And, um, Lastly, I want to say is, you know, what are some words of encouragement you have for the viewers? You know, earlier in your first question, you kind of mentioned the hadith of whoever helps build a house, whoever builds, help builds a masjid for Allah, Allah will build them a house in Jannah. You kind of touched on it a little earlier in the first question, in the first question I asked you. So now, what are some words of encouragement that you have for the viewers out there, inshallah? Um, we have to stick together to build up this masjid, no matter who are. Uh, how busy we are we and we have a time we have to come over here we have to learn Quran we have to learn Hadith we have to learn whatever we need in our life we have to stay stick together here mm -hmm. and whatever money I we have just if we have one dollar we have a two dollar doesn't matter we have a hundred dollar five thousand dollar we had to help this margin to for us, for the, our future generation. Inshallah. So, this is the main thing, and we have to make the dua to Allah to accept this masjid and this community. Our Ustad Abdul Haq, he's working really hard for us to give us the good knowledge, right knowledge, and Alasun uh, al Jamaat, you know, whatever they're following as a Alasun al Jamaat. Yeah. Allah peace be Amen. Amen. Uh, alhamdulillah, very wise words from a wise brother. And Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing to, you know, uh, once again speak with you. Because Alhamdulillah, uh, you're some of uh, high honor respect here. May Allah preserve you. Barakallahu fiqh. Jazakallahu khairan to being over here, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Mu'adh, kif al-hal? Alhamdulillah, bi khair, kif an? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Mu'adh, inshallah I'm gonna do the facts right here, the quick facts about you, inshallah Inshallah You don't mind, of course But uh, firstly, you are the Imam's son. Yeah. Secondly, you're one of the Qurra of the Masjid. Alhamdulillah. And thirdly, you are the youngest sibling, right? Yeah, I'm the youngest. The youngest sibling, alhamdulillah. And uh, Mu'adh, it's known that you and your family traveled a lot in your early life, like the early stages of your life. You guys traveled a lot. Yeah. And um, inshallah, I want to ask you to take me through one experience that you had in your early life, inshallah. <clears throat> inshallah. There was this one experience. I was young, maybe six or seven, so mm -hmm. I'm very young. We resided in Mecca at that time. Oh. I said, I was staying in Mecca, alhamdulillah. And my dad 
uh, he heard that uh, Sheikh Hosan he was teaching in the masjid in, in Riyadh so he was just he was in Mecca and my dad he heard that Sheikh Fawazan was teaching in a masjid in, in Riyadh mm-hmm. so we left Mecca Alhamdulillah we left Mecca and we went to Riyadh and uh, after moving to Riyadh there was a Jum'ah we went to by Sheikh Fawazan's masjid oh. well it's not his masjid but it's a masjid he, he was in you know yeah, yeah, yeah. for that khutbah Alhamdulillah right. And we went to the Jum'ah, me, my dad, my brothers, my whole family, yeah. alhamdulillah. And my dad, he got to go inside of the masjid, so he was inside. I was outside, mm-hmm. because the masjid is it's big, Allah yeah, but yeah. it's packed. Yeah. And so does in Arab lands and Muslim lands, like, Jum'ah is packed, akhi. Sahih. Yeah. So I was outside on the road, like this this, this uh, area in the road, they put a mat so people could pray. Mm-hmm. So after after Juma, I went inside of the masjid. I went to see my dad, you know. Yeah. Because I'm young, so I had to go. I had to go back to my dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alhamdulillah. So I went to my dad and I looked at him and he was crying. Look. When I found him, he was crying. Yeah. And he said, "Muad, go up to the sheikh, try to kiss his forehead." You know. So I went up to the sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, sheikh. Alaikum salam. He looked at me when he said that, but he didn't really smile because he's mm-hmm. a sh- Allah Mubarak is a strict sheikh. Yeah, Sheikh Hosan Allah Mubarak is very like stern. He's very stern. Yeah, Allah yeah. Allah <laughs> no. So he looked at me. He replied to my salams, and I tried to to kiss his forehead, but he didn't let me. Alhamdulillah, he didn't let me. Alhamdulillah. For whatever reason. Yeah, there's reasons. He's, he's an old sheikh, Allah yeah. Mubarak. He yeah. doesn't want diseases and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't want people to kiss his forehead and stuff. Understand, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So after that, I went back to my dad. And I told my dad, "Oh, he didn't let me kiss his forehead." <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. That's my experience. That's the one experience. Allah yeah. Allah. And you know, kissing the forehead is the, is the ultimate sign of respect. You know what I'm yeah. trying to say? Uh, yani, even like Allah, Allah rahmah, my grandmother was alive. My mom would like, go go kiss her forehead. Like, okay, inshallah, I'll kiss her forehead. And she wouldn't let me. She's like, she try to pull away. You know? Yeah. Subhanallah. But uh, Muad, ala kulli hal, inshallah. Um, I mentioned earlier as well that you're one of the Qurra of the Masjid. Uh, if you could please do me the favor of, inshallah, reciting some verses pertaining to the Masajid. Inshallah. No. Inshallah. Barakallah. I have these verses in mind, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. ما كان للمشركين أن يعمروا مساجد الله شاهدين على أنفسهم بالكفر أولئك حبطت أعمالهم وفي النار هم خالدون إنما يعمر مساجد الله من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة وآت الزكاة ولم يخش إلا الله فعسى أولئك أن يكونوا من المهتدين أجعلتم سقاية الحاج وعمارة المسجد الحرام كمن آمن بالله كمن آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وجاهد في سبيل الله لا يستون عند الله والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين Allah Mubarak. Barak Allah Fik Mu'adh. Fik Allah. May Allah preserve you with all your efforts and uh, we'll keep striving together seeking knowledge insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. Barak Allah Fik. Wa Fik Barak Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah we have a special guest here Siddiq. Kif halak? Alhamdulillah. I'm not no special guest but alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The reason why I say you're a special guest is because Allah Mubarak you do a lot of behind the scenes work and you are actually the Imam's son. And 
you, alhamdulillah, you're one of the leaders of the salawat here in this masjid. And with that being said, what are some ayat that comes to mind when it comes uh, when it comes to talking about masajid in general? Uh, alhamdulillah, uh, one of the ayat or some of the ayat that comes to mind is from uh, Surah Nur. Mm -hmm. Allah said in His book, "Bad Awdu Billahi Min Al Shaytan Al Rajim." في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو والآصال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله والله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب الله أكبر جميل الله مبارك um, With that being said, Alhamdulillah, you've mentioned very beautiful verses you know, pertaining, the masa pertaining the masajid and uh, from that, alhamdulillah, you've you had a long journey with your father. I mean, this is your father. You you live with him, grown up with him your whole life, Allahumma barik. And uh, you guys been through like many places, Allahumma barik. And um, what makes this message like this time, the like the time where you guys said khalas, This this is this is like you you guys see something more with it. Like do do you feel this way? Do you guys like see something more with this message in in particular, like this time around? Alhamdulillah, Allah guided us here for a reason And uh, this time around, Allah Mubarak, there is a lot of youth Who are inclined to the masjid and to the classes And to helping out in the masjid affairs Alhamdulillah, that's an amazing feeling Because uh, in these times, the society With the youth that we have in this time It's difficult because the youth, they have more fitna. And uh, alhamdulillah, it's, it's an amazing thing to see that the youth that we have here in, uh, in Buffalo, they are inclined to the masjid and they are inclined to seeking knowledge. Huh. So that's an amazing thing, you know, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, this, this masjid uh, is a big ni'mah and I just, I'm someone who could testify to this, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa Kif halak, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah, bi khair. Kif anti, amjad? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, nushkarallah. Alhamdulillah, without further ado, I want to get into this. Inshallah, this question I ask you is not too tough of a question, but it has to be asked. Inshallah. Um, you are an experienced imam, an experienced student of knowledge, and you've been through many different communities. What makes Buffalo... What makes this community in specific different? Alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa man wa ala wa ba'd. Alhamdulillah, that's a good question. Firstly, um, experience is a, is a big word, you know. Hmm. So we ask Allah to barwa ta'ala to accept from us. Amen. But naam, I've been, uh, I've traveled a lot and, uh, you know, I've been uh, an imam in different communities. And to be honest with you, that question uh, has uh, a general answer and a specific answer. Uh, the fact that uh, you know we're Muslims, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has commanded us to do righteous deeds wherever we may be, whether it is here in Buffalo or, as your brothers know, um, you know I'm from Trinidad. Mm. My parents are from Trinidad. Or any other place. Wherever we are, we are summoned in the religion to be upright and to do righteous deeds. Allah Taala wa Taala said, "Inna ladina amru amil salihat kanat lahum jannatul firdaus inuzula." 
indeed those people who believe and they do righteous deeds they will have the reward of jannat you know they will have they will have a high station in jannah the highest station likewise allah mentions in the same surah inna ladina wa amilu salihat inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihat inna la nudiyu ajru man ahsana amala and those people who do righteous deeds and those people who believe and they do righteous deeds indeed we will not do what we would not make their righteousness or their actions go to waste you know so it is upon us to continue doing righteous deeds so it is upon us to continue doing righteous deeds wherever we may be as for the the specific answer then alhamdulillah um this topic i've discussed it before and i've really contemplated upon it i've discussed it with my family members um what makes this community different from the other communities that i've been involved in is the level of ta'awun that we found the level of cooperation um not that uh, the other communities uh has khalal or shortcomings um one of the things that i believe that has contributed to the level of cooperation that we find here in masjid daru tawhid was sunnah in the buffalo environs is uh the diversity of nationalities and muslims coming from different uh cultures and different um adat you know people they have been nurtured differently all being muslims and us coming together here in in the masjid uh, all striving to be upon the quran and the sunnah as was practiced by the companions radiyallahu anhum this could be one of the main factors that we find in this um this ta'awun because people they come here for the same purpose alhamdulillah and uh like i said this is uh, something that is a, a favor of allah tabarak wa ta'ala upon us and upon uh muslims whoever they may be those that are listening you know it's it's something that is tremendous that allah azza wa jalla unites us upon iman uh on that point there is another factor alhamdulillah um as i'm having this discussion with you you being a shah from the shabab and those people who have uh, had the opportunity to see some of the shabab podcasts mm-hmm. this has also been a driving force that the community here it is a uh, it is a uh, filled with young people that have the desire to learn islam um as i had mentioned to your brothers I think this week or during the week that's uh um Islam is something that is trending right yeah. in this era that we're in mm-hmm. it's trending and people are turning towards it and one of the things that we have seen is that young people have started to show interest in the religion of Islam um without being too long again and this this has a um a divine uh a divine connection with the religion because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um he used to interact with a lot of young people the companion anas ibn malik and uh, abdullah ibn abbas mm-hmm. radiyallahu anhuma and many other companions so we find if you look into the seerah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam many of his interactions were with young people mm-hmm. and this is something that the communities they need to give focus upon for many years for many decades um young people have been attending the masajid and it has been and it has been more for a and it has been more for a cultural perspective and young people have not been given the opportunity to develop in the community and to do things so this is something that uh that has been an asset here in buffalo and masjid daru tawhid was sunnah that the shabab they have interests and you know it is upon us to open opportunities for them and allow them to grow and develop alhamdulillah alhamdulillah uh, uh you know very uh, beautiful answer and um you know i remember i, I remember mentioning uh, you mentioning about Anas ibn Malik how like he'd always be like by the hip of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet was with him a lot no. and um even abdullah ibn abbas you know him making dua for him you know allahumma fakkahu fi din and you know just beautiful examples from the sunnah you find no. um leading on to that I mentioned the sunnah. Uh, alhamdulillah we know you are a very big ag- big advocate on having community upon Quran and sunnah. No. Can you take me through why you're such a big av- advocate for this? 
Alhamdulillah, you're right. Um, I am um, very adamant upon upon the affairs that surround the masajid, mm. and uh, it is something that we definitely have to give a lot of focus on. Mm. Um, and you know, the masajid it uh, plays a very important part uh, in the life of a Muslim. Yeah. A very important part. I mean, there are practical examples that we can look at in the era that we live in. Uh, as for myself, um, Alhamdulillah, um, uh, I was once a young person, teenager. I grew up, and during my days uh, growing up, um, the interactions that we had was more was more uh, human interactions mm -hmm. in comparison to the era that we live in now. Right. We live in an era where everyone is dependent upon technology for everything. Everything. You want to learn how to cook, you go on YouTube. You want to learn how to fix something, you go on YouTube. With great regret, um, many people today, uh, in regards to the religion, they have uh, become attached to this dangerous path where they go on YouTube or they go online and they start searching for things that are that are related to the deen or questions that they need to get answers. And this is something that um, causes people to be very, very dull, dull-minded. Mm -hmm. Hearts become hard. Like I was saying, when I gr was growing up, um, you know, there were more sporting activities. People mm -hmm. used to go out into the public park they used to partake in sports and the whole community, everyone knew each, each other. Almost. And this caused people's hearts and brains to what? To develop. Mm -hmm. Human interaction causes that in comparison to the dangers of electronics. You don't have that human interaction. Mm -hmm. People are dependent upon these things and it causes the people to become dull. So the community, alhamdulillah, um, is an answer for that problem. That the people, they, when it comes to the religion, it should be connected to the masjid. Mm -hmm. Another uh, another point that is uh, very important um, that comes to mind is um, the role. The role of the masjid is something that is very divine. It is very divine and is like no other place. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Ahab al bilad ila Allah al masajid." Now that the most beloved place to Allah is the masajid, wa abghad al bilad ila Allah al aswak. And the most hated place to Allah are the the aswak, the marketplaces, the places where trade is being is being uh, conducted. Similarly, um, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam directed us in so much divine um, inspirations with the masajid. For example, he said in the hadith, "Um, qawm fi bayt min bayutillah." يَلُّونَ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَ فِيمَا بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتَ لَيْهُمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَذَقَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ إِنْدَهِ In a part of a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, there are people who do what? مَجْتَمَعَ They come together. Where do they come together? In the house, from the many houses of Allah. Listen to what is mentioned here. He said, يَلُّونَ كِتَابُ الله. They come together here for a purpose, to recite the Book of Allah. وَيَتَدَّارَسُونَ فِي مَا بَيْنَهُمْ And they also teach it between themselves. So it begins with what? These actions. Firstly, the dhikr, the recitation of the Book of Allah. Secondly, the masjid, it is a place for what? For the teaching the people, calling them to beneficial knowledge, nurturing the hearts and the minds. And he, is, there's interaction here. Then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said, if this is done, if this is done, then there are tremendous rewards. What did he say next? He said, Illa nazalat alayhimu sakina. Mm -hmm. Where is this in the house of, of Allah from the many houses? When they do these things, then Allah's tranquility is going to descend upon them. Illa nazalat alayhimu sakina wa ghashiyat humul rahma. And Allah's mercy, it is going to do what? is going to encompass them. And again, um, the Prophet wasallam he taught us the dua for entering the masjid. Allah mm -hmm. uh, Oh Allah, open for me the doors of your mercy. Where is this? 
when a person is entering the masjid. So firstly, we find in the masjid, there is sakina. The tranquility that is here is like no other place. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Allah loves these masajid, right? It's not like in the marketplaces. It's not like in the jobs. Secondly, the mercy of Allah is here based on the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. And then you have, وَحَفَتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ and the angels engulf these people. So the houses, the angels, so the houses of Allah, the angels are also present. Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous place. And Allah wow. Tabaru Ta'ala in the end of these uh, these words, he said, and the Prophet وسلم, in the end of these words, he said that Allah makes mention of those people that are doing those things in the houses of Allah. Allah makes mention of the Allah makes mention of them. Allah makes mention of them. With whomsoever he is with in the heavens. Oh. So again, the masjid is a tremendous place and it should be something that everyone advocates mm -hmm. because this is a place of development, it is a place of nurturing minds, it is a place of mercy, it is a place of tranquility. Mm -hmm. The Prophet wasallam, when it is that he migrated from Mecca to Medina, the first thing that they established was what? Was the masjid. So it shows the importance of the masajid it shows the great station that the masajid have it shows the great station that the masajid has in the religion of al-islam because from these communities if it is that it is implemented in the right way upon the legislations of allah you're going to uh, gain a lot in terms of developments in terms of uh, all aspects are found here in the salah in the salah there's brotherhood mm -hmm. In an act of worship, the Prophet ﷺ, he did what? He commanded us to straighten the lines and to join the feet. That's an act of brotherhood. Oh, and the list goes on. The list goes on in terms of the benefits. So we advocate that the masajid is from the, from the most beautiful places on the face of the earth. You know, uh, subhanAllah, um, subhanAllah, a lot of gems from just part of a hadith. I, Allah, I can't even... Uh, I can't put word. I can't put it to words of how beautiful the, the how many benefits and fruits and gems you extract just from a part of a hadith. Subhanallah. Yeah, very Allah, very Allah. important. Big <laughs> barakallah. And uh, another thing too is like you know, a lot of uh, shabab are more inclined to the malls than we are inclined to the masajid. And wallahi, it should be the opposite. Yeah, but as now, alhamdulillah, as, as we mentioned, we see we're yeah. seeing that the shabab are becoming more attached to the houses yes. of Allah. Yes. You mean Allahu Akbar? You know. I mean, look at the salawat now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not something that we want to to highlight, but you know, the shabab, alhamdulillah, they're attending the masajid. They're coming for the salawat. Mm -hmm. Salat al-Maghrib, Salat al-Isha. You know, young brothers are making effort to come for fajr and they start realizing the value of the houses of Allah. And you yeah. see you see the happiness and the, the, the peace in their hearts because there's nothing outside, especially in these times. You know, there's nothing for, for, for Muslim youth outside. You go everywhere. You smell marijuana. You smell. You see people, you know, uh, uh, partaking in fawahish and decencies. This is a, a tremendous place. Once it is that these houses are uplifted in the manner that it is legislated, mm -hmm. then you're only going to find khair. Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, alhamdulillah. Throughout this whole conversation we've been having, there's a lot of uh, benefits and, and things to take. Uh, if I could request you, inshallah. If you could just give one more benefit or words of encouragement, inshallah, for everyone out there as the imam, like, you know, something from your take, like, you know, something that you could give no. to give to us, inshallah. No. Alhamdulillah, as a word of advice for myself first, and then uh, to those that are listening, uh, comes from uh, the statement of Allah wa uh, ta'ala. This ayah is tremendous. And I ask that everyone deeply contemplate upon it. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Waladina jahadu fina, lanahdi anna hum subulana, wa inna Allaha la maal muhsinin." As for those people who what who strive in our cause, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He begins here by saying, "Waladina jahadu," and this verb jahada, it is to strive. And we know that striving, uh, all of us, we have things that we have to strive against in order to become successful. Whether it is in the matters of the deen, or it is in the matters of what we seek from, from the, 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 the allowed things in the dunya. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not in a comfort zone when it comes to striving. Yeah. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say, well, fina. As for those people who strive in our cause, striving here with regards to our own desires and the things that prevent us from doing good. And that is because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He informs us concerning the human soul. We find in Surah Yusuf that the wife of Al-Aziz, after her, um, her plot to seduce Yusuf, uh, became apparent and uh, it was proven that Yusuf alayhi salam, after being falsely imprisoned, that he was, that he was free from the claim. Um, she stated, as Allah tabarahu ta'ala uh, highlighted here, إِنَّ النَّفْسِ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٍ and indeed the soul, it is driven by evil desires. So the first thing that we have to understand is that we're all going to be driven by evil. Allah Tabarahu wa Ta'ala, He said, إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ Except whom your Lord shows His mercy. So Allah Azza wa Jalla in His verse, He says, As for those people who do what? Who strive in our cause. لَنَّهْدِ أَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا That we are surely going to guide them to our paths. We are surely going to guide them to our paths. And that's another important point. We discussed this ayah in one of our night's lessons here at the masjid. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions subulana. And this here is in the plural form. Mm -hmm. Paths. Uh, the singular being sabil. We all know that the path of Allah, it is one path. Yes. Surat al-Mustaqim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, he took a stick and he drew a line. Mm -hmm. And he said, Hadha Sabilullah. Mm -hmm. This is the path of Allah. And notice that he drew lines to the right and the left. Yes. Eh? And he said, Hadha Hisubul. These are the crooked paths. Mm -hmm. But Allah Azza wa Jal here, he mentioned, mm -hmm. That we are surely going to direct them to our paths. Why did he mention paths? And he did not mention path. That is because the scholars of Tafsir, they mentioned that subulana here, it means the shara'i. It means the different branches of what? Of righteous deeds. Like the salah and fasting in the month of Ramadan and paying the zakat, birril walidain, whatever it may be, cleaning the masjid, establishing the houses of Allah. All these are what? These are these are branches. These are the paths that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up for us. If it is that we strive against the evil of our souls in Allah's cause, He's going to make these acts of worship easy for us. So that is the first advice. The first advice is striving against the souls sure. in order to please Allah, in order to establish the religion in our lives, and in order for us to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lastly, in connection to this, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a part of a hadith, "Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk wa sta'in billah wa la ta'ajaz." Wallahi, these words are tremendous. It's a part of a hadith, tremendous benefits. Oh. What did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said here? He said, "Ihris, huh? harasa yahrisu ihris." Mm -hmm. This is the verb. Okay, ihris it means what? To safeguard something, to protect something, to keep something. Hold on to something. All of these are, are close translations. So what did he say here? Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Safeguard upon that which benefits you. Now contemplate. What benefits you, Amjad? Um, generally, uh, Islam benefits me. And Islam benefits you. That's from the Islamic matters, right? Of course, are there, yeah. Are other things that will benefit you outside of Islam? Of course, you know... Uh, for instance, I have the work to make make a means and provide for no. myself, and have to be have to exercise, be healthy, so I can increase my ibadat, inshallah. Hafazakallah. No. I mean, so so that's 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 beautiful to contemplate upon. So, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk," when a person he hears this, he's going to think that the only thing that the Messenger of Allah is saying here, because it's coming from the Messenger of Allah. Mm -hmm is to safeguard the matters of your deen. But in reality, it's safeguarding both matters. The matters of your deen that benefits you, and likewise the matters of the of the dunya. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He informed us in His book, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He would make this dua, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا 
وفي الآخرة حسنة. O our Lord, give us in this dunya good. And likewise in the akhirah hasana. So likewise we find here that in the dunya, from the worldly matters, a person has to seek what is going to benefit him. As he seeks what is going to benefit him, which is the main goal sure. in the life of the hereafter. So going back to the hadith, he said, Ihris alama yanfauk. So we understand both deen and dunya. Huh? Wasta'in billah. Okay? And seek help in Allah. Anything we do in this world, you have to seek Allah's help. Because if Allah doesn't help, then there's going to be no success. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forsakes, and if Allah, anything we do in this world, we have to seek the help of Allah. If Allah helps, there's going to be success. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forsakes, then every matter is going to be a failure. Allah azza wa jalla informed us in his book, إِيَّنْصُرُكُمُ اللَّهِ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ And if it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids you, then nothing is going to overcome you. وَيَقْذُلْكُمْ وَيَقْذُلْكُمْ فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِي And if it is that he forsakes you, then who is going to help you after him? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَقَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And it is upon Allah that the believers put their reliance and their trust. So we have to seek Allah's help. If we don't seek Allah's help, then we're not going to be successful. And for this reason, the Prophet ﷺ, he will supplicate. He will supplicate with his dua frequently. Allahumma rahmatak arju, fala takilni ila nafsi tarfata'in. Wallah, it is your mercy that I seek and do not leave me to myself even for the blink of an eye. Why? Because success is in the hands of Allah. The hadith continues with the Prophet ﷺ, he said, wala ta'jaz. And again, this is connected to وَاسْتَعِينْ بِاللَّهِ Seek help on Allah. وَلَا تَعْجَزْ It means, and do not make yourself incapable. Do not make yourself incapable. How can the Prophet wasallam, after making such a tremendous dua, اللَّهُمَ رَحْمَةَكْ أَرْجُوْ وَاللَّهُ لَزْ يُوْ مُرْشِي That I seek فَلَا تَكِلْنِ إِلَى نَفْسِ تَرْفَتَعِينَ He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making the dua and do not leave me to myself even th- he, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making the dua he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making the dua and do not leave me to myself even for the blink of an eye. Then how can he say or mean in these words wala ta'jaz and do not make yourself incapable? It's not possible that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us and don't make yourself capable. Why? Because capability is only in the hands of Allah. It's only in the hands of Allah. But rather what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is informing us here as Ahlul Ilm they have informed us and from them Shaykh Muhammad ibn Sali al Uthaymeen, Shaykh Sali al Fawzan, Hafizahullah, and other than them, uh, is Wala Tatakasa. And do not make yourselves Wala Tatakasa. And do not be lazy. Take the means in order to be successful. So look at these three things that I mentioned here. Safeguard upon that which benefits you Deen and Dunya. Seek help in Allah in these matters. Because without His help, without His help, there is no success. And if He forsakes you, because without His help, there is no success. And the last thing, do not be lazy. Get up and do what you need to do. Take the means to be successful. Take the means to accomplish your goals Islamically. And also to accomplish your goals in terms of deen. With regards to the community, alhamdulillah, and those brothers and sisters that are listening, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Get up and work for the sake of Allah. We have to do what we have to do. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He is the one who brings about the success. We have to give da'wah to the people. He is the one who directs the hearts. This is my words of advice, firstly to myself and then to my brothers and sisters. We ask Allah to barakhu ta'ala for success in all matters. Amen. And we ask Him to barakhu ta'ala to accept from us all of the deeds that we put forth Amen. and to give us all a good ending. Jazakallah khair. All well, these yeah. questions, I hope what I said was, of course. Uh, was a, a beacon of direction and uh, and of some benefit. Of course, of course. Yeah. And... Uh, 
Forgive me if the questions were a little bit tough, but you know I had to be asked. Alhamdulillah. No, Jazakallah uh, khair. Forgive me if the okay. answers were were a little bit uh, longer than normal. Um, it doesn't bring comfort to the heart uh, to sit down and just speak mm-hmm. and speak from what you think of right. and what you have um, in your heart, and it does not have anything to do with qala Allah wa qala Rasul. For indeed, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said. The best of you are those that are the most beneficial to the people. And a person, he cannot be beneficial to the people if he's speaking from his own accord. Right, right. Even the Prophet wasallam so, so. said, وَمَا يَنْتِكُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُحَىٰ That he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he speaks, he does not speak from his own accord, but rather that which he speaks from is revelation. So uh, forgive me for the long answers. No, no. Barakallahu feekum. Thank barakallahu. Alhamdulillah, the answers were no. very precise and beautiful and needed. No. Um, and I ask Allah for us to continue to benefit and seek beneficial knowledge and for us in our community to take it to that next step, the next leap, and for the ongoing um, ilm that's going to be given to us, inshallah, for the next stage. Barakallahu feekum. Wa feekum barakallahu. Hafadhaqam Allah. Wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.